In this video, we're going to split a big ash log. Now, the first thing I wanted to do on this log is I wanted to remove the bark. Um, the bark is pretty separated from the rest of the log, so all I really had to do is just kind of score it down the edge with a small hatchet, and then it just peeled off. The log is about four feet long and maybe oh, about two feet in diameter. Then I rolled it off into the shade because I didn't want to split it in the hot sun. First tool I use is a hatchet and a wooden mallet to start the split. I find this is the easiest way to get things going. Then I switch over to an engineer's hammer, which is about four pounds, and a metal wedge. Get the wedge going, then I switch over to an eight pound sledgehammer with a uh, guard on it because I've been known to miss occasionally. As you can see, I'm getting the split started and I'm going to try to carry that split through the whole log by just using more metal wedges. I couldn't get a metal wedge in right away, so I used the hatchet a little bit to get the split a little bigger and drove that wedge in a little more. Now I can get the next wedge in. I only have three metal wedges, so eventually I'll have to switch over to some wooden gluts that I've made. Gluts are just wooden wedges. When I use the wooden gluts, I like to use a wooden beetle or wooden maul um, to drive those, because if you use the metal, you'll split them pretty easily. There you can see one of the gluts that I just placed in there. And there's my beetle. Now the split's gotten started pretty well. You can see it goes the full length of the log now. Some of those fibers are a bit of an issue, so I'm going to use my hatchet to cut some of those little fibers out and get my gluts a little further in. This is probably the biggest log I've ever split. I've done quite a few and lots of ash, but this one's the biggest diameter. It was off the biggest tree on my property that the tree service left for me when they had to cut down a bunch of the ash trees because the ash borers were killing them. I like to have them leave me about four foot sections because after I split a four foot section, it's about the most I can possibly carry on my own. Making a lot of noise! <laughs> so that's my neighbor. You don't realize how Wisconsin you sound until you hear somebody in a recording. What are you doing? Splitting a log. There he is again. He likes to give me a hard time. He's a good guy though. Now I've rolled this log back over and I'm working on the other side because it's so big I can't get all my wedges and gluts to go the rest of the way. So I thought I could get the split to go on the other side a little bit too. Roll the log back over again. Again, having some trouble with some wood fibers, so I used the hatchet for a second there. And here you can see the very end of my beetle. It was made pretty quickly, and I didn't really take into account everything that was in the little log that I used, so I'm not terribly surprised at the split, but it was kind of annoying. So to get the gluts in a little farther, I just use another um, small log to set on top of them and drive them in a little deeper there. Ultimately though, I decide that I need something bigger. So there's a glut that I just made, which is just a ridiculous hunk of wood with, chopped into a wedge quickly. And I'm going to drive that baby home with a sledgehammer, which I would normally use my beetle, but it's broke. But that big glut really does the job and kind of finishes things off right here. Mm -hmm. 
slow motion is fine. So anyway, that's how I get them split. Now I got some wood to use for some different projects and it'll crack and check a little bit on the ends, but being four feet long, there's enough wood there that I can do a lot of fun stuff with it. There's all the tools laid out on the ground. At least what's left. Thanks a bunch for watching. Hope you have a good one.